my name is Richard Clement from, from Pierce Communications. Um, and I'm just going to literally tell you a little bit about who I am. And uh, what? What's, what's the problem? That's an, old, that's an old photograph of me. I'll, I'll get to it in a wee minute. Um, I'm the Internet Marketing Director with Pierce Communications. And I've been involved in, in Internet Marketing for uh, well over six years now. Before that, I had, I've had my own businesses. I've been in the IT industry for over 20 years. I know it's, it's hard to believe. I mean, I'm really wearing quite well. Um, and uh, so I've been doing this for, for, for a long time. And I started off doing this internet marketing stuff in the United States of America, um, which, you know, like it or not, it is ahead of, of the game in terms of, of what they do and their use of all these, of these mediums. And it was a great uh, three years or so that I spent over there and got a real insight into, you know, how can you use the internet and internet marketing to really make a difference to, to, to your, in, your own businesses. Um, I've been working with lots of, uh, lots of small companies, medium companies, large companies. I mean, I'm, what I'm trying to say there is it really doesn't matter. Any business, an individual uh, or a, a multinational a conglomerate can actually make the most of, of internet marketing and, and actually make a difference to their bottom line, which is what we're, what we're trying to do here. And, you know, for me, that's what this is all about. Um, it is all about the bottom line. It's, you know, the, whether it's social media, whether it's search engine optimization, whatever it might be, and I'm going to look at a few of these strategies. Um, the end result is, you know, you're trying to make extra money for your, for your business. And you should always keep that in mind whenever you're, you know, you're doing all of these act activities. Um, uh, the photograph there of a, of a younger me, a.k.a. Brad Pitt, um, is what I'm trying to say there is, is that, you know, you don't have to, what's actually happening in the background um, can com be completely different um, from what's actually happening on, on your website. So, you, you know, if you've got a fantastic looking website, um, you know, which is all singing, all dancing, it's wonderful design, wonderful branding, the words are right, et cetera, et cetera. You know, you can appear to be, you know, the Brad Pitt um, or, or uh, you know, a really big company or a very, a very smart company when really there's only you or maybe you and your dog, you know, working, working from the bedroom back at home. You know, so, you know, don't, don't just be, just because you're a small uh, business or you're a one-man band, it doesn't mean that you can't put across a better perception uh, online and, and, you know, people can do business with you that way. I'm just going to sort of look at the online marketing history before I go into some strategies that I think will give you, you know, a really good return on, on investment. In 1995, uh, or there or thereabouts, um, it was just get a website. You know, the World Wide Web had, had just been born, and there was this, you know, information that was online, and we we're all using, I think it was Netscape Navigator, I think was a, one of the first uh, browsers that you could actually use and, and, and get onto and, and find this thing called the World Wide Web. So it was just all about, let's get, get a website, let's get some information on there. Nobody really thought about how, how you know, we might attract visitors to, to, to a site. And it was really only then, around about the year 2000, that people started going, oh, well, hold on a minute, you know, um, you know, we put our domain name at the bottom of our emails, you know, we put it on the brochures. Um, you know, but it really wasn't doing an awful lot for us. Um, but we had the dot .com um, and uh, dot .bomb <laughs> uh, boom that happened around about the year 2000. And people really started then going, okay, well, hold on a minute, you know, there's something in this, you know, there's, there are some people making money from uh, online activities and, and helping their businesses. You know, how can we start to get traffic to, to our sites? Around about 2004 then, there was a really big focus on, on search and search engine optimization. Google was founded, I think, around about uh, 1999, if I remember rightly. Um, so Google was starting to get getting some maturity. And around about 2004, people started going, ah, oh, Google, you know, getting to the top of Google and, and Yahoo and some of the other search engines that were around, that was starting to work for people. So there was a massive focus on, on, on search uh, around about 2004. And then around about 2008, so I think Facebook came into being 2005, uh, Twitter, was it 2007, 2008? Uh, and then suddenly people started looking at, at social media and uh, how they could, you know, there was massive numbers of people uh, who were uh, starting to use Facebook, starting to use MySpace in, in the States. Um, Bebo is another one that was kicking around. Um, so, you know, people started going, okay, well, there's lots of people now using these mediums. How can we actually tap into those people and get them to, to help our, our businesses? And now we've hit 2010. You know, we do have a lot of maturity in the marketplace. You know, the search, engine, uh, search engines are, are, are very mature technology. Obviously, Google and the other search engines give very good results when you use them. <coughs> Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, you know, we've all got millions and millions of people who are using these things uh, on a daily basis. Um, you know, email marketing has, has obviously come of age quite a long time. So there's now lots of different stuff that you can, you can actually do. Um, and I'm going to touch on a few of them here and give you an insight into maybe how you can use a couple of them to get really good return on, on investment and, and time. 
uh, and really make a difference to your, to your bottom line. Just to give you a, a bit of background, current stats, um, roughly 75% of, of UK people are now using the, are now regular internet users, you know, three quarters of the whole population. Um, it's a massive, no, massive number of people. Um, 38 billion is expect, uh, was spent online in 2009, and that figure is expected to go up to over 40 billion in 2000 and 2010. Again, massive, massive numbers of, uh, and amounts of money that are being spent, spent online. 10% um, of all UK retail trade um, will be online in, in, in 2010. So, you know, it's really starting to, to make a difference to the, you know, the, the retailers on, on, on the high street. And 64% of the UK population um, research products or services in, in the first quarter of 2010. This is the stat that actually Martin mentioned earlier on. Um, so, you know, irrespective of where they came across the message, the brand, um, you know, the thought that they might buy something, you know, 64% of people then went, okay, well, before I actually buy anything, I'm going to go online, I'm going to do, do a bit of research and see if my decision to buy is, is vindicated or not. Okay, so given the, the background, you know, the maturity in the market, the numbers of people who are, who are online and using online, um, you know, what makes a successful site? Well, for me, it's, it's two things. The first one is, is to get targeted visitors to your site. You know, it's like having a, um, I don't know, having a baby shop on, on the Lisburn Road. You know, you're not gonna, you're not gonna target uh, single males under the, under the age of 30, you know, to come actually come into your shop. You know, there's no point. Um, so what you're trying to do is to get people who are actually interested in your products or your services to come to your site. You know, we call them, we call them targeted visitors. And then a successful site will convert those visitors um, in some kind of fashion, okay? So, you know, your, your website's not just a, a brochure and, and, you know, trying to make you feel good. Um, it really does need to do something. And the sorts of things that, that, that you can do are, obviously, if you've got an e-commerce site, you've got something that can sell physical products, you want them to buy the product. Okay, so that's the first thing you want people to do. Um, next thing, perhaps, um, is to capture their email address. So if you've got an e-commerce site, maybe you've got a service business, maybe you're a, a not-for-profit or whatever it might be, you know, one, a great thing that you can do is to capture email addresses. And I know uh, John's going to, you know, talk a little bit this afternoon about how he sort of uses his um, online marketing activities a lot of the time to drive people so he can get their email address. And once he's got their email address, then he can start to engage uh, with them on a, on a long-term basis. Um, obviously, contact you, you know, so if they come to your website, um, maybe you've got a service business, yes, there might be a form that says, you know, fill in this form and, you know, let us know what you're interested in. Uh, maybe you can capture their email address, but the next best thing might be that for them to lift the phone and, and actually give you, give you a call. So that's another, another result. And then finally, you know, visit your premises. If you, just because you've got an offline business um, that can't possibly, for whatever reason, sell online, um, you know, then why not drive them, drive them to your offline business? And uh, just a couple of streets away here, we've got um, Gardner Brothers, the jewelers, who I've been working with for a number of years. Um, you know, he's got a, a showcase uh, website, and uh, he makes a lot of money from that website, but he actually, what he does is he gets people to say, yes, I'm interested in that diamond ring. Um, they ask for a quote, he phones them up, um, and they discuss the price on the phone, and then he says, great, well, you know, come on into the shop and actually buy it. And people do it, you know, believe it or not, that, that convoluted process, people are, are very happy with. Um, he obviously is providing very good customer service, and people do come in, and, and via his website, inverted commas, you know, he's making a lot of money. So, so those are the four things that I think, you know, your website should be doing one of those four things. If it's not doing one of those four things, you know, you probably need to rethink, you know, what your strategy is and, and what you're actually doing with your website.